Chinese stocks are down 80%. And now, frustrated and angry, people are selling, especially foreigners. It goes so far that the market comments on China as uninvestable, uninvestable. Hmm, the last times I have heard the words uninvestable, well, it turned out pretty good. Just two years ago, oil was pretty uninvestable. That did well. 2011, Europe was deemed uninvestable because nobody could see a future there. Well, the stock market did well. This is a miracle, almost a double. As said, this is a miracle for Europe. 2009, bank stress testified to clarify US credit crisis. Banks are uninvestable. Well, the Bank of America is a 10x. So that is uninvestable. Yes, short term, anything can happen. But very often, the result is a 10x. So when someone tells you that something is uninvestable, this is because they are selling now and they bought at higher levels, it's time to look into because it could be the signal of capitulation. And we'll discuss five factors that will give you a better perspective whether China is really uninvestable. We'll discuss strategy because given the risk and reward, the key is strategy and how that strategy and the risk and reward might fit you. And we are also going to add China to our YouTube portfolio diversified and you'll see the exposure there to better even give context to the risk and reward and whether this is an opportunity for investors now. Let's start with noise versus reality. If you want to see noise, you don't have to go far. You just stick to YouTube, type in China and then forced exits, uh, Removing officials focused on reform and opening, says Kyle Bass. Uh, it's happening. Worst crash in history. Panic. Invading Taiwan. Uh, bad shape of the economy. Paradigm shift. Everything so terrible there. And then there is this guy called China Update, but it's just doom and gloom. If you check his videos, everything is like... China doesn't even exist anymore how they have destroyed themselves. This is the noise and you can get plenty of that because this is the drama. This is what people want to hear. And every media outlet is just pushing what gets clicks. But let's look at reality. So the combined value of US exports to China and imports from China is at pre-pandemic, pre-tariff, pre-everything highs. Thus China is producing, China is doing. There are some increased sanctions now, but that will likely be worked around as it has been the case in the past. Plus, when it comes to this noise and everything, you're probably reading it on your iPhone, which is a device that's made in China. Because as it stands, Chinese contractors produce more than 90% of Apple products, including an estimated 98% of iPhones. And if you look at global handset production, China is dominating, India is growing a little bit, but to switch this would take at least a decade. And then if you look at the production in China, it's down just because of Huawei having a bad time. All others have increased their production in China. So yes, there are issues, sanctions, tensions and everything. But for now, all works as usual. Businesses, supply chains, Apple iPhones, you watching this on a device or devices likely made in China. That's the reality. But the headlines impact people, clients, everybody's calling, Sven, what to do with this, what to do with that. That's the world we are living in and therefore managers react to what the clients think. Because if you lose the client, you lost your money, no matter whether a stock goes up or down. And this is a great example from BNP Paribas. And they say, given the current market volatilities, they reduced the risk on the portfolio level by exiting weaker holdings with longer and uncertain uncertain paths to realize the investment thesis and by reducing sizing of names that may be subject to higher geopolitical risk. Let me translate this for you. She practically said 
I sold not to have China in my portfolio end of year. Looks bad, I lose clients. I can't predict what will happen, thus the risk is too high. Better not to have it in my portfolio, despite now prices being at a fifth of what they were. And yes, I was buying at the top, but my growth model looked very, very nice. Now my model doesn't look that nice, so better sell, close the position at an 80% loss and that's it. And the situation is that if you're an asset manager, if you sell China now, when everybody else has sold, you don't have it in your portfolio at the end of the year. If you don't sell, and then it goes even lower because other risks materialize, you lose your job. If you sell and it doubles over the next one year, well, everybody else was selling, so you always make the decision so that you keep your job whatever happens. That's always in the mindset of these asset managers discussing on Bloomberg and everywhere. And another point here is herd behavior. How everyone behaves the same, which is not maybe the best way to invest in the stock market. Let me just show you this. The Hang Seng Index is down uh, 50% from the 2021 peak. Okay, grain shares, China ETF, 80%. What does this mean? So Hong Kong influence 50%, foreign stocks mostly down 80% with the tech bubble bursting also. Okay, 80%. But if we look at the Shanghai index, it's down just 18% over the same period. Locally, Chinese people are not dumping their stocks in panic. They see things are going on normally. Life is developing. Life is under still COVID zero, but hopefully it will get better sometimes. Foreigners as Bloomberg said at the beginning, are panicking because of frustration. And that explains most of the stock market crash that we have seen. And the moral of the story here is that no foreigner is looking at valuation anymore. And if we look at valuation, the current PE ratio of the Hang Seng Index is 5.74. Yes, the PE ratio is at mid single digits 5.74 and if we look historically it has never been this low not even in the bottom of the great financial crisis not even at the death of the asian crisis in 1998 and if we look at this and then compare it to the sap 500 only once in history was the p ratio at five here 1982 was around seven late 1940s also around seven and you are buying one of the largest global economies at a p ratio of five those who did that for the US over the past 120 years had amazing returns. And by 2030, China is expected to surpass the United States as the largest global economy. However, headlines, China returning to Maoism and everything, it might happen. I'm not saying that it might not happen. I'm just saying that we have to weigh things correctly Keep in mind that the world is about to end every two years and then we have to see the risk and the reward and how that impacts us. And this is just a summary of what has been published and promotion of Shanghai's chiefs puts loyalty over everything. So it's about loyalty and return to Maoism. But if you look an article from the editor of the Asia Times, he says that everyone is misreading Xi and the rise of Li. Because Li, the new loyal to Xi, is dedicated to a high-tech-led future for China. Because you need to read and then you see, okay, it's not that black and white. It's a little bit more gray. Li was one of Jack Ma's most visible supporters. He brought Elon Musk to Shanghai and accelerated technological innovation and STEM talent development were keywords in Xi's work report. What Western analysts and US Secretary of State Anthony Blinken picked out instead was the reiteration of China's long-standing policy with respect to Taiwan. Reiteration, nothing new. So we'll see how the US is going to bully China and China bully everyone else, but that is political 
things for now. Tesla is producing lower the price a little bit, but is still working there in Shanghai. And then the most important thing, why stocks go down? Well, because people are selling and fewer people are buying because in the news there is no catalyst. China will be closed forever because of the zero policies there. Nothing will ever move in China. There is no internet, Maoism. But then when you look at things, it is not really that simple. China is not Russia. There is a huge difference there. Nothing like this is produced in Russia. China is the second largest global economy. And if we compare Russian exports, those are things that you can buy elsewhere. So maybe the price will be different, but whatever they produce can be bought elsewhere, just commodities. But if we look at Chinese exports, whatever they produce cannot be bought very quickly elsewhere. Computers, circuits, machines, uh, video recording equipment, refrigerators, machinery, plastic, uh, vitamins, whatever, crazy, crazy amounts of things produced in China. And this cannot be simply replicated somewhere else. So if something happens there on the supply chain, sanctions, wars, then I think the last thing to worry about will be our Chinese stock positions. So these are the key five factors that I think are key to be understood, to understand properly the risk and reward and how that might fit you when it comes to investing in China. And then you have to see how this fits your strategy. So let's start with the reward. Now, we are buying something at the P ratio of five, the largest global economy likely over the next few decades. And if we just compare that to the S&P 500, the returns for buying at the P ratio of seven were stellar. So if there is no war or craziness, you can expect similar returns in the long term. In the short term, it's a play on valuation too. If we look at the historical P ratios, you can see here Asian crisis, the P ratio was around seven. And then in a few years, it already came to 30 and something. And then also in 2007, it was above 20, 2009, and then also recently 2015 in 2017. So. If we look at this now, that is at five, if it goes to 15, that is a free X just from a historical perspective of valuation. So that would be the short and long-term possible rewards. Free X, 10 X in the long-term, it is possible. However, we have to see also how the risk, which there is, there is risk. This is no margin of safety, sleep well at night investment. You need to accept the possible losses from here if you want to include this in your strategy. If you don't want to accept it, don't worry. There will be other investment opportunities. That's why I'm here to research, to do the analysis, risk and reward, and then you see what does, what doesn't fit you. The risk comes from, of course, invasion, Taiwan, and uh, especially military chiefs uh, like this idea because then they have something to do. To a man with a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. However, I also read then from the Carnegie Institute, how would we know when China is preparing to invade Taiwan? And you can read this, you can search this online. If war is Beijing's plan, there would be reliable indications that it is really coming. Increased production of everything related, uh, like we have seen that Russia had been preparing to invade, unfortunately, Ukraine. That was even by satellite, you could see that. So it won't be a surprise. And then we have maybe, as we had with Russia, the time to get out in case, let's hope not, that happens. But yes, the risk is that it can go to zero. I think there is a 
10% chance of your investment being a zero over time, 20% for sluggish, and over the next five to 10 years, 70% for a three to five X. And the key to understand here is how does this fit you? Because you have to keep in mind, it can go to zero. And of course, if China goes to zero, I reiterate myself, I think that nobody of us will think about their portfolios because that would be a crisis where what you own in financial assets won't really matter that much. So we can only hope that this doesn't happen, but it can happen and uh, the probabilities don't matter. If it happens, even if I say there is a 10% chance over the next five years, that doesn't matter for investors. If you put your money in, you have to think always Am I ready if it happens? That's it. Now, I've been buying China started too early, uh, two years ago, and uh, you can learn more from my investing mistakes and how I started buying too early. I have a Chinese company that pays hefty dividends. I'm reinvesting those. I did the big buy last month, another buy this Tuesday. So that's my strategy, but I know I can take a hit whatever happens. Now, let's implement also this China into our YouTube portfolio. So how does this fit? our YouTube portfolio strategy. As you probably know, I'm using Interactive Brokers, which is an international broker offering access to practically all markets. So if you want something like this, you can check the link in the description below. And if you check that, you support the channel. Thanks for clicking there. Now, if we look at our portfolio didn't do that badly but we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten positions i will discuss the portfolio in a detailed video in the coming weeks we have also some additions to make and i'm working also on other analysis but this is a pretty diversified portfolio we said we'll go to 20 positions so on a million available, the maximum I could be investing is 50,000 if we divide 1 million by 20. But this is such an opportunity, I feel, especially in a diversified portfolio, that I'm going to do something a little bit crazy here. And that is out of this portfolio, because of the risk and reward, the high upside, and the fact that I can lose. 10% of my portfolio, let's say, if it really goes to zero, if it is blocked, I'm going to buy a hundred thousand of Web ETF just to follow this in China. Now, I see already it is up as I am filming this. It would have been much better here, but for the long term perspective, it is not a bad position because you don't know the difference between buying in March 2009 or in April 2009. So we have now a little bit changed the portfolio and the largest position is something and we will follow this over time, check if there is the war. I hope that never happens, but we must keep in mind that there is a chance of this being ugly for longer. And I really don't know what will happen. Worst case, if you invest, if you put a penny in this, you know, okay, worst case, I can lose it. That's the risk and reward of doing this. That's the best I can give you. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next video.